Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to continue from where we left off. So we're going to look at this fun problem, which is we have a regular language here, and we know from what we've learned so far that this regular language corresponds to a DFA or an NFA. And we know that it can be an NFA because we have shown that NFAs and DFAs are equivalent to each other. We're going to look at this language, which is parameterized on L. So this language that we're making right here is going to be different depending on which regular language we, we provide. But what we'll have down here is that L can be any regular language. It doesn't matter which one it is. So subsequences of L, what is this language? It's every string such that Z is a subsequence of some string in L. So what in the world does that mean? So let's do a, a short example here. So let's just say that we had, uh, I'm just making this up, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So what is this? Well, if we apply the sub, I spelled it wrong. So subsequences of L, well, if we take the empty string, that's a subs, uh, subsequence of everything. So we're gonna have the empty string in there. And remember that subsequence is just like a substring, but it could be non-consecutive. So instead of like a one zero right here, I could have one one. It could be um, non-consecutive here. So uh, we could have um, just the single character zero and one because I can just take a length one substring and that's already a subsequence. I can take the strings themselves because I can just take the entire string, that's a whole sequence. Or I can take a subsequence. Well, this one's already exhausted. Well, for this one, um, I haven't done one zero yet. It, the subsequence could be consecutive, but it doesn't have to be. So one zero, we've already gotten zero one, but we haven't gotten the one one yet, so we're going to include that as well. So this is the set of uh, subsequences of this little language right here. So what we're asked to do is, if we have a regular language, then we need to show that the subsequences language is also regular. So pause the video and try to think about it before continuing and put what you think is the answer in the comments. Okay, so how do we actually solve this? So what we know, well actually all that we know, is that L is a regular language here. So L is regular, that implies there is a DFA, let's just say, it doesn't really matter, for L. And we know that for sure because that's what it means to be a regular language. Well, how do we get the subsequences here? So let's actually think about what a subsequence actually is. So let's just say we have a string like this, w1, w2, up to wn. And a subsequence, of course, is just picking some of the characters in, in order, but they could be non-consecutive. So what this effectively means is that for this string, all of the parts that were not selected are effectively just wiped out of here. So what does that mean for us? Well, what it means is that the, if we took the DFA and read this particular string, in the machine that we should make for subsequences, then the transition that corresponds to this character should be taken as an epsilon transition, because effectively the first character we should read is this one. And we can actually carry this out throughout the whole thing throughout the whole DFA. So, so the main idea here is to add an epsilon transition for every existing transition. So every transition in the DFA, we're going to add an epsilon transition onto that guy. So let's actually do a, a small example of this. So Here's an example, and I'm just making this up on the spot. So let's just say we have uh, this particular uh, DFA. It could be an NFA, but we're um, insisting that it's a DFA first. Um, 
So let's just say we have this. Q2, let's say it's final. And then A, B, or C. I just made this up. So what is the subsequence version? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this existing uh, DFA, copy and paste it right here. And maybe, actually, maybe I'll change the color a little bit. I'll change it to red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in purple, I'm going to add the epsilon transitions. So actually for the self loops, we, uh, we don't actually have to uh, add a, a self loop there for the epsilon transitions, but we can if we want to. But for the ones that actually go to a different state, we need to add an epsilon transition onto all of these. And why not? Let's just put the epsilon transition there. There's no reason not to. Okay, so what is this actually, uh, how can we actually be sure of this? So let's look at a particular string that is accepted by this uh, DFA right here. So let's just pick, oh, I don't know, uh, A, B, A, A, B, just as an example. A, A, B, A, B. Okay, well then, what this implies is that down here, we should accept all subsequences of this thing. Well, that is epsilon uh, A, uh, B, because those are single characters. We need to get the length two substrings. A, 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 B, B, A, B, B. The B, B is because we can uh, have, uh, have non-consecutive characters. Uh, what else can we get? We can get the uh, length three ones. Actually, can we get, we can get almost everything. So A, 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 and it, it goes on. Uh, I'm not gonna check all of these. For epsilon, well, we can just say, oh, we're in Q0, then go to Q1, then Q2. Then for uh, single A, what we can do is, in this uh, Q0 state, I can take this A transition, not the epsilon one, the A transition, and go over to here with the epsilon transition here. And with B, what we can do, there are actually several ways we can do this. We can take the self loop B here and then epsilon twice, or we can take uh, epsilon here and then B here. There's actually infinitely many things we could do for each of these strings, believe it or not, because of all these epsilon transitions. Okay. So why does this work? How can we be sure that no matter which substring, well, subsequence I pick out of this, it will be accepted here? Well, note what this, um, this string does. It says, okay, we're going to do A, uh, A, A, B, A, B. Oh, oh, actually, there are two things we could have done, but either way. So let's just say we did A, B, A, B. A, B, like that. So around the, the loop twice in some sense. Well, we had an epsilon transition adjoined onto each one of these. So that means that for the character we normally would have read going on that transition, we have the option now of taking it out, which is exactly what a subsequence is actually is for. So this actually tells us that no matter, if you pick a string that is accepted here, then then we will have a string that is accepted here. So that actually tells us that we actually do get all of the subsequences right here of this string. And that actually tells us that this um, language subsequence of L is regular. Why? Well, we have just made an NFA for this language, but we have already shown that NFAs are equivalent to DFAs. So we have built an NFA for subsequences of L, and we know that NFAs are equal to DFAs, and so this implies that subsequences of L is regular. So the key here to understand is that we can actually choose to drop out some of the characters if we want to. 
So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you have other interesting problems like this. It really helps with the growth of the channel. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the growth of it. If you want to contribute more, you can do so via Patreon or our Discord server in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.